Hello, everyone. This talk is about dialogue systems that can support recovery of schizophrenia patients. This is a joint paper by Chiaki Oshiyama, Shinichi Niwa, Takuichi Nishimura, and me, Christina Jokinen. First, my colleague Chiaki Oshiyama will discuss schizophrenia and its current treatment approach. I will then continue talking about the design of dialogue systems for schizophrenia rehabilitation, as well as ethical issues involved in the development. Our purpose is the development of novel interaction technology to tackle the problem in schizophrenia. We hope to discuss the use of novel interaction technology to tackle the problem in schizophrenia, focusing on issues related to detecting the symptoms of schizophrenia and providing appropriate support for the patients so they can live independently outside of caregiving organizations. What is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a mental illness characterized by relapsing episodes of psychosis. It's characterized by distortions in thinking, perception, emotions, language, the sense of self, and behavior. Common experiences include hallucinations and delusions. Schizophrenia is a chronic mental disorder affecting 20 million people worldwide with an annual incidence of 0.2 to 0.4 persons per thousand people with a lifetime prevalence of about 1%. According to diagnostic criteria, morbidity and prevalence are almost the same regardless of country or culture. The diagnosis criteria for schizophrenia case is to have more than two of the five symptoms. Schizophrenia is caused by brain dysfunction and can be diagnosed based on three main symptoms. First, positive symptom refers to behavior which is not usually seen in healthy people such as hallucination and delusion, losing touch with the reality. Second, negative symptom refers to disruption of normal behavior, reduced facial expressions and speaking. Difficulties in starting activities, cognitive dysfunction, concern, changes in memory, and other cognitive functions. Schizophrenia is treatable, and treatment involves combinations of medications, psychological treatment, and support from the community for daily life. The treatment goal is patient recovery, which refers to their social participation. Facilitation of assistance living supported housing, and supported employment are effective management strategies for people with schizophrenia. However, schizophrenic patients use many healthcare services. Schizophrenia is one of the most expensive mental illness in terms of total mental costs. Neurocognitive abilities, rather than clinical symptoms, hinder social participation by people with schizophrenia. Figure 1 shows characteristic profile in schizophrenia. Improving these cognitive functions promotes social participation in schizophrenia patients. One of the most difficult aspects of training is finding strategies and using them. In recent years, various problems aim at improving cognitive functions to improve social functions have been developed and their effects have been verified. I will now continue the presentation and talk about the design of interactive robot systems for schizophrenia rehabilitation. Such a system can provide information on the schizophrenia symptoms, assist in cognitive skills training, and support the patients in their everyday situations for independent living. First, what are the merits of using interactive robots in rehabilitation? If the interactive robot is always available for the patient, it can provide effective support whenever needed. The support can also be tailored according to the patient's specific needs. Moreover, interactive robots can sustain healthy life by providing tools to evaluate daily activities 
and giving advice and suggestions on practical solutions. Such support can boost a patient's self-confidence via positive feedback of being able to act independently in everyday social situations. Finally, interactive robots can also be perceived as operating objectively without human judgment or subjective bias. This may help to solve problems related to evaluators' lack of ability, lack of time and subjective bias. There are many activities where an interactive robot can support rehabilitation and everyday life situations. First, the robot can assist the patients in providing information, facts, news and peer experience. By increasing knowledge, the system can give emotional support and improve feelings of security and also socializing skills. The robot can also provide help in cognitive exercises, such as memory and word association games or storytelling events, and by so doing, train the person's cognitive skills. Finally, the robot agent can support the patient in their daily activities. For instance, the robot can assist in daily life control, such as reminding to take medication. The robot agent can also support the patient in social situations and interactions with other people by helping them in meta-level skills like emotion control. Previous research on dialogue systems in healthcare area include, for instance, the EU project MENHIR, led by Zoraida Calejas at University of Granada. It focuses on mental ill health, such as mild depression and anxiety, and developing conversational technologies to assist people manage their conditions. Also, Timothy Bigmore's work on relational agents is closely related. Relational agents are embodied conversational agents which can maintain long-term social-emotional relationships with the users, such as they can remember past history and manage future expectations. Applications range from coaching and counseling to psychotherapy and healthcare. The work by Grassmann, Hoffmann and Mikulainen is directly related to schizophrenia, but its focus is on technology. It uses artificial neural networks to model the symptoms of schizophrenia and to simulate incoherent storyline and delusions, which can be said to have false beliefs repeated. Our work draws on all of these studies but we focus especially on the functionality of dialogue systems so they can provide information, help and support in various rehabilitation situations. Dialogue system functionality depends on the type of activity and on the available technology. If the system is meant to provide information about the illness, symptoms and treatments in therapy, then a chat-based question answering dialogue system is appropriate. In order to support effective and natural conversations, the system can combine explanatory and emotional language capability and thus promote natural and trustworthy interaction. If the system is expected to provide help with a particular task goal, then more complicated requirements need to be addressed. For instance, in training to improve the patient's cognitive skills and ability to live independently, the system should have knowledge of what are the problematic issues of each task, then evaluate the user's performance with respect to the intended goal and provide extra help as needed for the user to achieve that goal. Multimodal technology can be further used to recognize the face of the person or affective states like being bored or overexcited. Finally, if the goal is to provide diagnostic support so as to help the patient and medical staff to monitor the patient's progress, more advanced multimodal technology is necessary. The system needs to recognize the activities the user is engaged with, as well as to link the actions and tasks to structured knowledge in its memory. Moreover, the system needs to compare consecutive activity states and reason about possible changes in the person's physical state and behavior. 
When developing systems which can assist, monitor and support the patients to live independently and manage their everyday life, many ethical and social issues need to be taken into consideration. The first questions concern the acceptance and impact of the robot systems. What kind of systems are desirable for rehabilitation and what are possible solutions and service areas where social robots can make a difference? In other words, the development needs to engage not only engineers, but the whole community, the patients, medical personnel, family, friends and the society. Naturally, data storing and privacy issues are also important, including encryption, confidentiality and the length of storing. These are widely discussed in digital services in general, with the conclusion that pros and cons dealing with privacy and secure identification need to be balanced. Personal preferences commonly include, for instance, the choice of prompts, voice, language and exercise times. However, also possibility to allow the system to store dialogues and search histories in order to enable more accurate adaptation to individual interaction patterns is subject to privacy issues. It may be useful to tailor the system's functionality according to the typical situations and interactive patterns in, in the patient's everyday life. Such knowledge allows the system to provide reliable and constant service, which can contribute to the perception of the system as a reliable and trustworthy service. However, this presupposes monitoring of interaction. Information acquired through sensors, dialogues and dynamic context can be beneficial for the development of accurate technology which again increases reliability of the application and also counts towards designing long-term relational agents. But it's important that the user is aware of the situation and also consciously agrees with the logging of such information. Moreover, awareness of the different sensors presupposes that the system is capable of making distinctions between critical and less pertinent information, and can also provide reliable and reasonable suggestions of how the detected activities and changes can be interpreted. Lastly, we wish to emphasize importance of the context in which the dialogues and information delivery take place. The main issues deal with the access rights to information that is available through interactive situation. Who has the right to listen to the conversations and training sessions? Family members, friends, staff, passers-by, officials. It may be necessary to define groups and roles for the monitoring and decision-making purposes, but again, the individual preferences are crucial. Access to sensitive knowledge and the use of that knowledge presupposes mutual trust, which is an important concept in designing and developing successful and usable dialogue systems. In this presentation, we have discussed the current approaches to schizophrenia and argued for the use of dialogue technology to provide new solutions to rehabilitation issues. It has been a pleasure to talk to you. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.